Marseille, a former two-time champion of the world, Gary Anderson! Game two and a quarter-final spot up for grabs. It is Gary Anderson, a former winner of this title, arguably the top performer in the world of darts in terms of the standard in 2024 so far. He's averaging more than anybody else. He is playing absolutely brilliantly on the Pro Tour. However, this weekend, while he has won his two games so far, both by scorelines of ten legs to five, he is not playing anywhere near that standard. In fact, he's not playing as well as Martin Lukeman is playing here in Minehead this weekend. Lukeman has had to play an extra game, which he won. He has beaten Jermaine Watermainer, Leonard Gates and Danny Noppert, surviving a couple of match darts from the 2022 champion. Can he add another former winner of this title, the 2019 winner, sorry, 2018 winner, Gary Anderson, to his kill list? Anderson has not only won this, he reached the final fully 14 years ago, but in all the other 13 appearances at the UK Open, he has failed to reach the quarter-final stages. So, Paul Nicholson, is this just the third time he reaches the quarters of the UK Open? Or can Smash do something he's never done before? Based on the way that Martin's playing at the minute, we can't take him out of the equation. However, there is something else to say. 100. If Gary wins this game, based on previous behaviours, he makes the final. And that would not be a shock at the minute for someone who is ranked outside of the top 20 in the world, Ooh, even though we're talking about him as one of the best statistical players in the world at this point. I say one of. I'm just trying to leave it in the ether because Ooh, I know there's that fine. argument of who is the best player in the world right now. Well, the rankings don't lie sometimes, but Gary's in great form. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a false position. But then, is it? Look, he, he was in a load of TV tournaments last year. He just didn't win many games. You know, he made the quarterfinals of the Grand Slam. That is his only quarterfinal in a major tournament for two years. And yet, he was on the Pro Tour, chucking huge numbers all the way through last year as well. It didn't translate to TV form. There's also another thing when it comes to this place, because he doesn't find himself on stage two that often. But he is the only person to win the title on this stage. So maybe he does like Red's bar. Let's see how he likes it tonight. He likes that 180 though. Trouble 16 or trouble 20. Trouble 20 it is for double 14. And that is a superb checkout from Smash. 180 from Gary Anderson to leave himself on a double. And Martin Lutman takes out a ton plus finish. 97. Martin has been to the last 16 before himself, but to tell you how long ago that was, it was before Gary Anderson was champion of this tournament. It was 2017, and he lost to Ian White on that occasion, but that was before anybody knew anything sizable about Smash. Well before he was a household name. 100. Yeah, that's he come and played. That's when we had UK Open qualifiers to get this event. They're pretty much open to anybody. So Martin Lupin turned up, won a fair few games in them, got himself to this tournament, went on a, a great run to the last 16. But it would be a while before Lukeman would then get himself onto the tour. And getting onto the tour, he's, he, he's a great example, actually, of a player who's got onto the tour and got better. Because if you have serious designs about being one of the world's best dart players, the best place to learn is by playing the best in the world. Now, some, sometimes you sink, sometimes you swim. Martin Luton has learnt to swim. 
last year wasn't great for him. He had problems at home. His wife wasn't very well at all. That's all cleared up now. And he's come back into form. And he's playing really, really good stuff this weekend. He's played some good stuff this year. In fact, these two, last 20 games, Martin Lutman, a third of them, he's averaged over a ton. Gary Anderson, 12 of the last 20, he's averaged over a ton. Delightful stuff. Just like that. But is he denied again after a maximum style visit? Got to stay on the treble, yeah? Um, he's annoyed because he thought it was a decent guy. That was a little bit closer to the treble than he would have liked. Level four for Gary. Uh, team. Well, well, well. Lukeman for 2 0. This is for a break of throw. And he gets it. 2 0, Martin Lukeman. And there was just a little thing with the second dart from Gary. The dart at double four. The follow through just seemed to stop. It was very, very odd. And. You don't throw the ridiculous numbers. In fact, Gary Anderson has his highest ever recorded average the other week 80. on the Pro Tour. More than 117. And I know he'll have thrown massive numbers that we don't have records for, but it still says something. But you don't do that without your technique being pretty on point. And that's a sort of weird thing to see him do when he's in this purple patch. It's a tough 100. discipline playing two games of best of 19 in a day. What's tougher than that is playing three of them. And then playing best of 21 as well, just towards the end of tomorrow night. But is it fair of me to say, comparing Lukman to two years ago when he was really starting to kick on when he made the final of the 100. Munich European Tour event, the German Darts Grand Prix, where he lost to a certain Luke Humphries who kicked on from that first European Tour win. I think Lukman's playing better now than he was then and I don't want any recency bias it's not that he just looks more comfortable more likely more threatening than he was back then I certainly think it's comparable I mean uh, there are that spell that he had as Gary oh, how about that 168 to leave himself on double four but every time he has that approach shot Lukman's ahead he is double 13 for three nil Martin Lukeman hoovering up chances. 3-0 against the Flying Scotsman. And all right, you know what? The last three days have convinced me. I think you're right. Martin Lukeman's playing better than he was a couple of years ago. Although I do, it does stick in my memory on the European Tour him playing Damon Hetter twice and defying averages of like 108 from Hetter to beat him. I do remember that first Hetter game and that's arguably Martin's best ever performance uh, and it looked first to six but it was sensational and I I'd not seen him do that kind of 100. thing before that was the thing not only did he play well he played well when another guy's playing incredible just as well against him everybody's got a little bit of kryptonite out there haven't they I mean Damon Hetter has got the wood on some players yeah, Chris Dobie for one of them <laughs> Just because Lukeman's getting this lead, don't yes. count Gary out yet. Yeah, but what is... Uh, look, Martin Lukeman would probably have taken 5-5 five, five at the break if you offered him at the start of the match. But right now, that's unfortunate. It's not the first start that's gone like that in this game. He's got to be really wary of that. That's because he has a really upright angle of attack in the board. And if that middle of the point is hitting the wire... It's going in two vertical. 117. Yeah, what would be, what score would Martin Lukeman take now after 10 legs? 6-4. At worst. No need to go on the 19s with Lukeman not down to a finish. Yep. 86. Choosing to leave tops, which is interesting because a lot of the time Gary Anderson has been going for double 16 in recent months yeah, maybe he's figured something out when practicing with Ryan Searle 100 Gary you but you're absolutely right he has been leaving 32 a lot double 5 Game full play. Well, there you go gets him out of jail gives him his first leg of the night in front of what's going to be another crowd that loves Gary because let's face it which crowd doesn't maybe Nottingham at the Premier League. It seems to be the only one that gives him a little bit of stick. 59. 
Yeah, there aren't many where... I mean, there's always a huge selection of Gary Anderson fans wherever he goes. I do get the feeling that double five was an important dog. Easy six. Isn't Gary getting really annoyed already. And sometimes Gary getting annoyed is exactly what he needs. It kicks him into overdrive. So what you're telling me is that Martin's actually played a blinder there because he's 100. making sure that Gary isn't too angry. Yeah, exactly. Don't You wouldn't like him when he's angry. Sometimes you feel the best way to beat Gary Anderson Ooh, is just sort of plod through in a low quality game where it's all a bit stodgy and rubbish because if they both if you both get going he's going to win yeah don't go four legs in front just keep it at two or three 97. keep it playable and make sure that he's not too perturbed i never really had that when i played him at the uk Open. it was always a bit dramatic in our trilogy between 2009 and 2011 what, what is it like playing 16. Gary Anderson when he's on in full flight? Because there are few players who can match his top level. It's pretty hard. <laughs> he is, you know it's going to be good. You know he's going to play well. And we played three consecutive years. 09, I won 6-4. 2010, he beat me 9-7. And then the next year, I beat him 9-8. It was three close games. Three excellent matches. Three very different dynamics as well because oh, I felt a bit angry in the first one. He was very motivated in the next one. And then the best game we had was the third one and it was extremely friendly. Double 16 for Smash. Double 8 for 4-1. One. 4-1 four one it is. And Martin Lukeman's finishing is superb here. Over on the main stage, Dimitri Vandenberg has got the upper hand. 81. But in this one, you're absolutely right about the finishing with Martin Lukeman. 4 1 lead. He's pretty close to ideal. But he, he's 4 out of 6, which is 66%. That's obviously great anyway. But more important than that, if he's had a dart at double in the visit, it has gone. 59. So the two misses that he's had have not mattered because he's seen it off in that visit. That sort of, whatever you want to call it, a functional doubles percentage is 100. Now, there have been shots he's looked at. He had a look at 100 and didn't 96. get a darted double. So it's not been perfect. But if he's had a chance at the outer ring, it's gone. Yeah, we talk about 100 percentages a lot. and We talk about averages too. But if you were to offer someone in this tournament right now the ability to play an entire game with visit perfect doubles, they would have your arm off. Oh, my. Great use of the board from Martin, who had another flopper in the treble downstairs and decided to go back upstairs to great effect. 140. This is for another break of throw, a two-break lead. Martin Lukeman, he's not missing doubles. He is not missing anything. It is a superb leg, and smash is, quite frankly, in this game, better than Gary Anderson, despite the fact he's averaging pretty much the same. They're both around the 95-96 mark, but Anderson, one out of six on the doubles, smash five out of seven. He's having Gary Anderson for breakfast and dinner at the minute. And if you like a bit of potatoes for mash get smash, this is a really good display, but he's he's even doing it with darts on the floor. <laughs> I think he's <laughs> I think he's had a bounce out there that almost hit the referee. He's apologised for it, but then he's also laughed in his face and chucked another one in the treble twenty. To be fair, I, I don't know if it was uh, George Noble or uh, Marcus Scott Gibling it hit, and it could have been Gibling. He's a huge target. I think even Gary saw the lighter side of that one. You don't see many bounce outs these days. 60. Particularly going to the right hand side of the board. That must have been quite a wicked deflection. <laughs> you know when Rob Cross beat Michael Van Gerwen at Alexandra Palace at the end of 2017? Mm -hmm. He hit the last double, then he threw his darts towards the hockey. I think one of them nearly hit Kirk Bevins in the ankle. Oh, he nearly did. Would have got him a £5,000 bonus under uh, PDC rules if I implemented it. This is really good from Lukeman. I know Gary has missed doubles, but he's only had darts at double in two legs of this match. He's not been given chances. 
He's been there, he's been waiting, but Lukman is just gobbling up every opportunity, and here's another one. It's a good single. Plenty of clearance under the flight for the tops. Just like that. That is so surgical. Just like Luke Humphreys, he talks about getting the single for 60 really high, so the flight is out the way. It's no longer a blocker. But even for Lukman with the short stem, it can be very useful to have it just under the, the top's wire. And even when it, he has a bad dart, he recovers brilliantly. That's two and two legs. Bounce out, 60-60. Big five, 60-60. The bad visits are brilliant. Yeah, and he's on a roll here where he won the first three legs, lost one, won the next three legs. And the thing is, every single leg that Martin oh, Lutman is having, he's getting towards the back end, he's setting the shot up, he is taking it out. The first opportunity he gets, onto the oh, next leg. And at the minute, he must be feeling so confident. Every time he gets a little sniff of an opportunity, no problem, I'll see that off, and he does, next leg. And the lead is increasing and increasing and increasing. Gary Anderson must win nine of the next 12 legs. And even the Flying Scotsman is going to find that difficult. He's going to get a dart a double in this leg. But if we may revise what we talked about previously in the match, Dan, if it's 6-4 at the break, Lukman will be very disappointed. Now he's thinking 8-2, 7-3 at worst. Double 10 is found. Gary Anderson has got just his second leg, but he is under the gun here. Got to find multiple breaks, and you stress that if he doesn't get this one, he's going to need a break, Lukman, every time after the break. Well, the chances are Lukman is going to start missing doubles at some point. He has to, doesn't he? He said that about Johnny Clayton against James Wade at the Masters in 2021, mm -hmm. and he did. missed one out of 10. Oh, and even when Gary Anderson starts firing in the big scores, Martin Lukman is matching him. Well, Gary's been under pressure 44. since the first leg, and he just feels like he's trying to catch Martin, who is cruising at a very, very good pace at the minute. 81. I can't remember one bad, I mean, really bad visit in this match for Lukman. 140. Mm. Well, he Yet again, Anderson gets himself on a finish, but Lukman's already there. And this time it's tens. Oh, my word smash. What a display. Now he's looking for 8 2 at the break. Gary, to his credit, Putting that fist bump out there, that's somewhat uncharacteristic because he likes to stay in his own zone. But right now, he has to admire what Martin's doing. This is a magnificent display. It is, without hyperbole, so far in the game, it is one of the greatest finishing displays we've seen in the history of this tournament. Because Martin Lukman, if he's had a dart at double in the visit, he's gone. He's chucked in a 140 finish in there as well. And he's doing it against Gary Anderson. A man who has been flying coming into this tournament. Sixty. That's maybe one of the worst visits he's had. And considering he had two markers for the 60 there, that was a miss on dart three. You have to say that's a little bit of a reprieve for Gary, who must get the 7-3, surely. He can't possibly go through an 8-2 scenario, well, just like Searle from Friday. Quite. Ryan Searle, his practice partner, did come from 8-2 down to lead in his game and then lost it. 60. Just the 60 and a two treble visit will just keep Lukeman interested because he's gobbling up any chances. Even a one treble visit gets him to a finish. Just looking to hammer it between those two and he's unable to do it. So Anderson, a couple of visits from here to get a third leg. Double 18. He has done his job and he has one leg 10. So he's not going to be facing 8-2 down like his practice partner did yesterday evening. But Smash has obliterated his way to within three legs of the last day at the UK Open for the first time. Will he get it done? Stay with us after the break. We'll find out.
This is the UK Open, and we might be watching a former champion, Gary Anderson, bow out before the quarterfinals for the 14th time. The former winner and former finalist is just unable to answer this brilliant performance in terms of finishing from Martin Lukman. I'm not sure many people would be able to. They're both averaging around the 99 mark, but Lukman, astonishingly, is it seven out of his nine attempts at double, and he has been perfect in his visits when he's had darts at double. Whatever chance has come his way, he has taken with a plum, including a brilliant 140 checkout, and he is 7-3 up, needing just three more legs to book his place in the quarterfinals of this tournament for the first time and only his second ever major quarterfinal. Ricky Evans is already in only his second ever major quarterfinal. Dimitri Vandenberger, Belgian number one, is through to the quarterfinals, despite him being written off by many as a player who's had his day. The UK Open is delivering. But can Martin Lutman deliver three more legs and knock the Flying Scotsman out of the tournament? Let's see what Gary's got after the break. 83. This has got to be close to perfect from here. Well, the thing is, it could be, though, couldn't it? That's, That's the, the thing. thing. <laughs> We've already mentioned it this weekend. A game on this stage in the Players' Championship Finals where Ryan Searle was 7-3 up on Dirk van Dijvenbode. And Dirk van Dijvenbode came out after the break, and this is not an exaggeration, averaged 120 for the rest of the match and won it. But that was freakish. 60. And Gary Anderson might need something like that. Well, if we thought of this as a hypothetical situation come this afternoon, and Martin Lukman was 7-3 up on anybody, and you said, based on form in 2024 alone, who would you want to put in to try and get out of this jam? Eight out of ten people would probably say Anderson. And the other two might say, well, Searle or maybe MVG, but Searle and MVG aren't in this tournament. They were eliminated very early. Well, Gary Anderson has come out strongly after the break, leaves himself on tops after 12 darts. That's what he needs to do. He needs to get to the finishers quicker than Martin because that's exactly what Martin was doing to him in the first five legs. However, this 97 would be catastrophic for the Flying Scotsman and his chances of getting closer. Double-double. Is that the plan? No. 57. He'll get close to the treble, but does leave himself on tops if there's any more misses. There are not. It is a break of throw. Gary Anderson fighting back. How many times have we referenced the first leg coming back from the break, but the ability of Anderson to break immediately, it's huge. He might have to break Lukman every time he throws first from this point on. He might have the luxury of letting Lukman hold once. That's about it. Well, Luke Woodhouse was 7-3 down, came out after the break, won the next three legs, and looked like he was turning that game around against Ricky Evans. But it was Ricky who produced a 140 checkout that stopped him in his tracks, and then he ran out and booked his place in the last eight. Things are starting to look up. That first start is being planted. And when he's getting three points together like that, that'll get everybody's attention. And I'm not just talking about the audience who are starting to think that there's a game on now. 100, Gary, you've won 90. Lukman's starting to score tons instead of 140s and 180s. Whereas Gary is getting to those finishes first. 65. That was an interesting route, wasn't it? Martin, you're going 161. 161 won't go. But Gary Anderson will come back to clean up the 25. And I think it'll be 17 double four. Maybe it'll be 9 double eight. Yeah, 9 double eight it'll be. And 9 double eight it is. It is back to back legs for Gary Anderson, something he has not done in this game. That's what's been missing the last couple of legs. He needs to start planting that 140 column. Hasn't had a dart a double in this session yet, Lukman. 100. If you are playing somebody who's not missing doubles, just don't let him have a go at him. It's a good plan. 
Easier said than done. But then again, the way to do that is to outscore, and Not Gary predominantly said. through his successful career has outscored players. That's why he beat Phil Taylor in his first successful world final, because he was a heavier scorer than Taylor. That's why he won the last set. Oh, this is good, though. Lutman's got some firepower as well. It's 180 number three for Smash. He will get a chance, but can he continue this magnificent finishing? I do get the feeling that Anderson at some point is going to need Lutman to make an error on something like this. 14. 22. Not again. He's seeing the doubles like they're the size of my net itself. He cannot miss. He cannot miss doubles. He's cracked the code. He's cheated the game. He's got into the back end of darts and hacked it, Martin Lukeman. 80% on doubles in the match. This is getting into Johnny Clayton territory. One of the premier doubles performances that we have ever seen in any major. Yeah, Gary Anderson is throwing the kitchen sink at him here. Martin Lukeman has found a 12 data on throw. That's going to win you the leg. It needs a 9 data for Anderson. But he might need to find two more the way this is going. 45. Just boiling this down a little bit. Has Gary just left himself a little bit too much to do? Tremendous backup shot to the maximum. No 136 for Gary. And Lukeman's surely going to get another dart to double here. If not one, it might be two. Oh, double 16. Oh, this is silly. This is utterly, utterly silly. Martin Lukeman. What must this feel like? He cannot miss at the end of legs. I can tell you what it feels like, Dan. I played Steve Farmer at the World Championship in the first round. I ended the game with 83% on the doubles. It makes you feel like you're 15 feet tall. 140. You feel like you aren't going to miss even if you close your eyes. 140. This is one of the standout displays of Martin Lutman's career. He'd only ever played Gary Anderson once. It was last year. He lost 6-5. Really good game, actually. 100. Anderson averaged, averaged 103 and only won it by the odd leg. But Martin Lutman has finished flawlessly. Oh, great use of the board. Had to go 18s on dart two. Double dips his bread. And now he's 140 away, and he's got good memories of this shot. 25. Martin, you're going 140. He's not going to repeat the trick, but he is going to leave himself on something makeable. And Gary Anderson. 74. Oh, interesting. I think that's a bad choice for Martin Lukeman. But then again, if you're finishing anything, it doesn't matter. Martin, you're Let's see if he can 66. finish with 66 for over 80% on doubles for the match. Double nine. Martin Lukeman with one of the greatest displays of finishing you are ever likely to see. He has beaten Gary Anderson and beaten him well. And even the iconic flying Scotsman is tipping his hat to smash. It is an unbelievable display of finishing. 100 average, beating Gary who averaged 102 and a half. And he only missed three darts at double and they were in visits where he took it out anyway. Martin Lumen is a quarter-finalist at the UK Open for the first time in his career, and what a performance it was.